I mean, I think like I was kind of affected by the fact that so many of the fans were bamboozled. And like so many of those fans have kind of like left comments and reached out to me and let me know that like, hey, I can't believe that we actually thought that these guys were next up. And uh, yeah, I don't know, that shit got to me for a while where I was like, oh my God. Like, I don't know, for a while I started to actually believe that I was the problem. Okay. And now I realize that that is absolutely not the truth and that they in fact were the problem okay. and that they in fact made the bad decisions and stuff. I mean, the only real thing that you could give me in terms of like what I did wrong was just that I didn't those of them as much as I possibly should have. You know, I thought that they would just like long term understand that like how much I had done for them and that they wouldn't do the exact kind of thing that they did. And I was, uh, I was let down to see that, but. You know. All right. On the bright side though, I kind of see what you say about AD maybe not being a good creator. Um, but T-Rell I think is dope, even though I know you too. Like, he's falling off rapidly. Cause he's, it's all word salad, you know? Like <laughs> when you see him next to somebody who actually knows how to podcast, like I remember seeing a bunch of clips from when Van Latham went on their podcast. He's great dude. Like, it was brutal. Yeah. It was like a alien civilization just being met by like a superior being. And oh, it was just so, <laughs> like in that moment, I was just like, oh bro, like you are not cut out for this. Like this is n like that Van Lathan thing more than anything else just really convinced me like, oh shit, like you are ass. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you are not going anywhere. And I feel like in a way he kind of almost gets that now. What? <laughs> no, I mean, I can see, like, I know when Rory went to the thing with you guys, I was, like, very taken aback by how little research they seem to have done. Oh, yeah. But that's their whole thing. Like, I, I don't think T-Rail has the, the capability to, like, sit and study someone and look up, look them up. And, like, you know, every interview I do is, like, a couple hours on the internet researching them, you know? I think he's, like, way too self-absorbed to do that. I mean, like, even Smack is too self-absorbed to learn the name of the person that they're interviewing. Okay. Like he, he recently interviewed somebody that I interviewed and like while my interview was obviously superior, Smack couldn't remember his name like five different times in the interview from like, you know, everybody's posting this shit in the Reddit. So, I mean, you know, it's T-Rell more than anybody who's ever podcasted needed the propping up of something like No Jumper, you know? What does the propping up of No Jumper mean? What does that look like? Like, what do you do to put these people in success, full positions? I think you like put somebody like them in the arena with somebody who really knows how to podcast if you allow me to kind of like guide you through that process that that's going to like really cover up a lot of the flaws that are now incredibly obvious to their fan base and then on top of that too it's just like bringing in this built-in audience but like again these dudes have been propped up since no jumper by academics and joe budden yeah. kind of hard to think of like a bigger cosign mm -hmm. and it doesn't do anything for them because ultimately the product is not good enough to bring anybody in yeah i do feel like um i know when joe started talking to me on twitter spaces and joe started talking about me on the podcast i kind of got fearful because i felt like being under the radar is where you really can work but then when people draw that you think the cosign is going to be big enough but yeah no i understand what you mean it seemed like there was a very coordinated attempt to prop up both of them um, after that whole breakup. This is going to be the last clip because this is already showing that this full interview is going to be full of shots and bombs at every direction. Overall, Danny from the stop did a great job at getting Adam to admit that he was really hurt and messed up when a DNT reel left no jumper. From the way that Adam was conducting himself and his channel, it was easy for us to assume that he was hurt by them leaving. But in the midst of all of this tension, the fact that he showed that vulnerability might seem like a genuine move. But we can't forget that this is Mojo Adam and they already discussed doing think pieces. Seems like they thought of a way to bait AD and T real into responding to Adam, so he can reveal those texts from AD. That will be very damaging to his brand of standing on business. When Danny and Adam discuss T real, Danny seemed to be trying hard to give T real some credit for his podcast skills. But when they started to talk about the Van Lathan interview, T-Real got put in that same ether blender. Once again, it was hilarious how Adam described the Van Lathan interview being like a superior being coming in contact with some sort of caveman. It was funny and there was a lot of truth to how the interview went, but it was a good look for them to even have Van Lathan on their podcast. T-Real certainly has to work on that, 
But it seems like Danny made himself a new target for back on Fig when he mentioned how they didn't do a great job with the Rory and Mal interview. Something to pay attention to in the future. But what do you'll think about Danny being scared since Joe Budden exposed who he was to the public? This interview showed a new side of Danny from the stop, and I'm looking forward to seeing more interviews and the normal content. For now, hope you all enjoyed and don't forget. Every day you wake up is like receiving a winning lottery ticket, don't forget to smile when you're cashing out. Keep up with the phenomenal comments, likes, subscribes, and shares. Peace.